Hello everyone. You are catching us on a Wednesday. IG is checking connection. <laughs> Hi everybody. I know nobody's on here yet. You know we I don't like perpetrating the fraud, y'all. So ain't nobody on here yet. But y'all coming. They letting us know. Hey JV. Dex, I'm trying to bring you on now. Go live with Dex here. <laughs> All righty. Hey, JV. How you doing, honey? Hey, it's a day for. Hi, love bug. How are you? Um, 1X save. That's my little baby bro. How you doing, everybody? Come on in. I know it's letting people know we're here. I'm here to die for. I'm so happy. I, I don't think I've seen you actually on the live in a while, but you know how IG be liking a hate girl. <laughs> um, Dex, okay, I brought you on a while ago. What had happened? Huh? What did IG put you through like a time space? No, like, I didn't like my setup, so I tried to move it around real quick, and, and then I was like, oh, you're late. I, the other day, Hair to Die For, I'm like, why does his name sound familiar? I, <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> on uh, Nene Leakes' live, and Hair to Die For was on the live, too. Nene was doing nothing. She was just running her mouth. But welcome, guys. We're super excited to have you guys here. Yes, we are. How are you doing today, Dexter? Today has been such an incredible day. Like, I took the morning off of work. I did it. I spoke at a career fair. I launched my podcast, Industry Friends, season three, mm -hmm. and new episodes. Life is amazing right now. Jay Riders and Dexter like, come. Um, now I'm jealous. Like, life is. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Um. Yeah, I think you actually sent me that Nene live. And it's so, so funny because I was like, I just, you know, sometimes you got to be in a mood for certain things. Like, you got to be in, sometimes Nene is one of those persons I have to be a mood for. Andrew Codwell the Great definitely got to be, <laughs> even though he's still blocked a bitch, but that's okay. Because one day, he's going to unblock me. If, if, if it's Andrew, oh, wait, first off, um, happy birthday, Tom. I don't know if you go by Tom anymore, but Marion, her birthday was. Is it yesterday? These days are going so fast. Was it yesterday? Happy birthday, whichever day it was. 23rd. The days go by so fast. Um, With Andrew, if, if I get the notification that he's live, I got to look at it. I can't look at it on here, like me, but if it's Facebook and he's live, I got to get on there. I just hate when he's not entertaining and I jump on there. Yeah. Don't waste my time. Thank you. You better get on here. I need to do cooking with the Caldwells and that that with that salmonella poison and mess that he be up there making he be, mm. and he be frying ribs all the time <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen him make a vegetable and i also he's the only person in america i've ever seen fry a rib you fat it's <laughs> just so fat you know i love a good because you know, last week we were talking about like the fried Oreos and stuff like that. So every now and again, you see something, you'll be like, all right, I might have to go ahead and do it. But a damn fried rib by Andrew. What are you doing for Memorial Day? Honestly, I have zero plans. It's so really? funny. I'm I like that I'm becoming this person. I might be in your inbox. I might invite you over. If I, if I get this game night together, I'm going to invite you over. Okay. Well, please don't have no fry, I would, fried rib. I do have pizza and wings. Okay, good. You, you want me to bring... Uh-uh. You going to give us the pizza and wings. I want the motherfucking crab legs that you always be talking about. And don't be hiding them from the guests. <laughs> you see how... You see how when people have they like when they want to throw something, they want to give you the hamburgers and hot dogs, but then they want to be flexing with the steak and lobster and crab. <laughs> you can't... <laughs> oh, somebody said fried is actually a thing. Why y'all yelling? Okay. Y'all gotta stop! I'm sick of it. Wait, Jay Ryder said he wanted to pop on for 30 seconds. Now, Jay Ryder, I know you ain't going to come over here stunt with us with these good Mexican views. He's, he's, he's in Mexico. I don't even think I'm posting no pictures. Well, let me see. I'm a, Jay, you better be ready. I'm going to bring you on because we want to be nosy and in your business and you on vacation and we here working. Hold on. Let me see if I can grab him. <laughs> and besides, we haven't been on with Jay in a long I don't Jay was on with us when we first started this thing a while ago. He would come on a few times. So, come 
Come on, Mexican. What's up? Come yeah. on, Hatman. <laughs> This ain't nothing, man. This ain't nothing, man. What's going on? Oh, it's light work, Jay. It's light work. Light work. This ain't nothing, right? Time we were at Mexico, it, and you even got a better situation than we, because when we were in Mexico, this it was nothing but sea. What was what was it? Sea seaweed was all over the beach. You don't even was die. Like, mm. I, I don't want to go too far. Must I want to nice. slip over the balcony, but it's all right. Well, right. well, that's your business. I don't want to. I'm only in, no, in Cancun. I'm only in Cancun. Okay, okay. What, are you out there with the love and touch? I am. I am. Oh. It's, it's actually about um, probably about fifteen couples out here. Actually, so it's about well, it's about what? About fifteen, 15 couples, couples out here. Couple. About thirty people out here. Oh, nice. Okay, I guess I'll be at the next one since I'm not coupled up right now. Next year, I'm there, though, Jack. <laughs> uh, I, I thought I like saw it. something like you was involved with something not too long ago. Well, you know, listen, we always moving and shaking out here. <laughs> listen, well, but Jay, let's just say this. Shit's been canceled. <laughs> Well, you know, my, so my situation... Let me know. Listen, you know my first situation was canceled in six months, so you know how that is. Mm -hmm. You know? Six months? Six months, that, yes. yes. I'm just A whole trying to see big $30,000 wet in six months. Let me see if I beat you. So I did July. So sad. What'd you say, Dex? Oh, I was about to, I was about to say, did I beat him? I, I beat you. <laughs> no. Oh, what? what? I'm trying to think that this was in 2018. I, was, I think I met you like after that. And, and, and Jay, let's just say you, you're you much better off than you were in 2018. Let's just say that. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Well, Jay, have an amazing time. We don't want to hold up hey. your vacation. Thank you for stop pulling up Listen, on us, I, friend. I feel famous now. Y'all let me into y'all, you know, little thing here. I, oh. I feel famous now. I feel important. We stop it. Well, stop. Jay, when you get... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dex. So I said we're the ones who feel famous. This this is Jay Ryder, guys. Yes. Apparently, the city's closing down this week. So who's going to be hosting the parties? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> All right, Jay. When you come back, you're going to have to come and join us and let us know. Hopefully, the city don't shut down and you can let us know about your parties, oh, okay? I missed that. They about to shut the city down again? That's what they possibly saying. Oh, my but we'll God. See. Man, I know that. Here. Damn, I ain't know that, but hopefully not, man. Yeah. But All I'll right, check Jack, out. baby. Thank you, honey. It's all fat. Thank you for popping by the neighborhood. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Bye, honey. All right. All right, baby. Yeah, I, I love Jay. Jay is that <laughs> guy. He, he, he's, he told y'all it's light work. It's nothing. What I love is that now when people go to Mexico, they think about me. Like, they really, this is like multiple times people have gone to Mexico, and they feel like they need to tell me when they go there. I'm, I'm really a trendsetter. You are. I, I'm really a trendsetter. <laughs> like, so, let's just say that. So, they nobody go to Mexico before Dexico went to Mexico. I, it I wasn't they, even a thing. I cut the, I cut the ribbon. It wasn't even open. <laughs> I opened up the country. <laughs> I opened it up. Like, I had the scissors. I had the big uh -huh. I cut the ribbon. I was like, okay, come to Mexico. And I was yes. like, Mexico. Now so, Mexico ain't have no kind of history. The history started 2021. Summer of 2021 is when the Mexican history started, correct? I discovered it. Yeah, I'm Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I'm Christopher Columbus, and my plane landed somewhere, and I said, this is this is my territory here. I, I got to go back now. A.K.A. A A A King Cultural Appropriation? How is going to be cultural appropriation when I'm the coach? There wasn't nobody here. Was I'm nobody. the culture. I got to see nobody. <laughs> Who was here, sweetie? They can't even speak English or whatever language I'm speaking. But they be saying, too, terrible. Uh-huh. 
Terrible, Your Honor. Terrible. But hi, how is everybody doing this evening? Pull up a seat. Dex, you're good today. You said you had an amazing day. Yes. Mine was Keep very talking. well. Tiring, but well. Keep talking, though. I have to run and grab some water. But but I'm listen I'm here. Like I'm listening. Okay. Can't wait. Entertain me said Trump is coming for you. Child girl. Trump and bumping his gums lately. Joe, everybody and their mama is just bumping their gums. Each day goes by. Trump gets more confident regarding the possibility of him running in 2024. Oh, I learned Bless that. Him. He's supposed to be running in 2024, too. Who? Mike Pence. I learned that. I learned yesterday that he might be running, too. <laughs> You alive? Wow, I did not know that. I really did. Not that I thought he died. I just didn't think he existed anymore. I'm just, I was shocked. Well, neither does Trump, because Trump said, who is he? Who is that? He what? down bad. Trump said, Pence down bad. He lied. He said he could. He said he was. He couldn't uh, stop the steal, but he could have. <laughs> oh, I forgot he turned on him at the end. Remember he said, <laughs> You know what, Pence actually, hmm, I forgot about, I, t I completely forgot about all of that stuff. I forget they were coming after him. And De Dexter, I understand why you forget. Do you see this time warp we're fucking in? <laughs> Every time you turn around, it's something else. January 6th feels like 20 years ago at this point with everything happening in life. Yeah, I'm going to go grab my water now, but keep going. I'm, I'm here. Oh, she went and did it. Okay, my bad. I wasn't paying attention. How is everybody looking? Entertain me. He says she can't uh, take him. Nicole Gross. Hey, baby. Thank you guys for popping in on us. I don't ever hear about that anymore, child. Now they're somewhat starting to talk about it a little bit. I've been hearing little, little uh, like Easter eggs, and I think it's still because they're bringing you know people up on charges not necessarily the uh the people who were there in attendance the public but the politicians so i'm you can tell they're sitting there trying to build a case so every now and again more and more i'm starting to hear things about january 6th but unfortunately with everything going on i guess we are here dexter will return but let's kick it off because i just I don't want to stay in this this space the entire show. So let's just go. We all have seen yesterday, unfortunately, another mass shooting. This time, it was um, an elementary school in Texas. Prior to that, we had another mass shooting the same day. Breaking news. Not too far from where we are in New Jersey, um, there was a a shootout, a mass shooting shootout between the police and the shooter in New Jersey. I think a few days before that, we had the mass shooter show up at an Asian church to kill people. And then before that, again, two weeks span before that, there was also the Tops grocery store. Innocent people showed up, black people showed up to do their weekly grocery shopping. And a crazed person came in and gunned them down. Everybody, since all this is happening, I mean, we've heard it ever since, really, Sandy Hook. Mental illness, racism, all the, the, the things, the firing, the conduits to, to, you know, to get it started. And I will give you that. But you can't always use that as an excuse. Rather, people now right, with this new guy, they're saying the guy was bullied in school and he didn't have good clothes. At the end of the day, the core issue are guns. That is the one thing we can control. You cannot take, you, we can try with all the positive messages out there. We can't control if somebody has racism in their heart. They're, we can't do it. We cannot control that they are going to go out and and, and take part in a very malicious life ending plan. But what we can do, we can cut back on the accessibility for these people to go to have access to these guns. 
I'm to the point now, everybody is talking about gun control. Oh, we need 90% of the country wants background checks. Why do you need an AR-15? But right now, and this is me speaking as a, I hate to say this, a gun advocate. It brings me joy to go off, um, to go to the fire rings and bust off a couple. It's like a good detox. I enjoy it. But not at the sake of innocent people. People who are getting up, trying to live their lives, and just doing day-to-day -day normal activities. Our babies can't go to school without that impending fear of, could this be it? Could this be the last day? Could this be the last time I get a kiss from my parents as they walk me into the schoolhouse? What's happening here? What's going on? Yeah, I think just for me in this overall situation, like I just, I just look at it like we're there, there are the elderly and there's children. And I think if we're not protecting those two communities, I just don't know where we go from here. Like that, that's sad to me. Um, it's weird because like, I, I do like that, you know, this show, we can keep, we can talk about things that are very serious but Toya, like, you know, when you go on your rent sometimes, you be saying some things and I just be like, Because hmm. I bust off. You bust off a couple rounds. When, but when you said I want to bust off a couple, I said, I'm going to laugh. I'm out. <laughs> I can't take, I can't keep serious no more. That was funny to me. The situation is horrible. It's not funny at all, but like, yeah. That was funny. Um, but another thing that I do think is really important is that we keep saying, like, now we want, um, like, a background checks and everything. We want people. We want to make sure the people who have these guns are not crazed or anything like that. And honestly, I think we'll get there, maybe. But I don't think that's going to be enough, though, because, like, truthfully, I think the only real option is to get the, like AR-15s and stuff like that off the street. And the only reason I say that is because, okay, sure, you do a background check on somebody and they come back and there's nothing wrong with them. They're not mentally incapable of doing it but if we're saying that the root issue of this is is poverty and um and bullying that's not a mental disorder that's not a mental thing at all like i'm born this way i'm born into this life and other people are making fun of me for whatever reason if i snap because of that and i pass all the mental checks i still have access to these guns so i think that we're going to do a little bit deeper and when we start talk, calling for gun control it's got to be to get rid of them like we, we they just can't be on the streets. They shouldn't be accessible. But no. the the background checks is just not enough. Like it's if, not. I'm if sorry. We, we depend on background checks. We're gonna be back here again, and we're gonna keep begging people to do something else. Like you, you got to take them off the street. Like that's just what. Yeah. It, uh, also, and then even and, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just saw, I also saw that the NRA this weekend is supposed to have like a really big like a festival type of situation like to celebrate guns, and they're still gonna go and do that despite this happening and then like two weeks ago all those other um shootings happened i think that's it's crazy to me and the texas governor who was speaking today he will also be speaking at the nra festivities and that's why now i don't know if this is performance art i would hope that is not because I'm just, I'm always funny about politicians now. You say one thing, but what are you doing for? But Beto O'Rourke pulling up on the press conference, calling the governor out. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and initially I want to be like, yes, amazing. That's what we need. But what is it going to follow up to? Like, I, I, I need more than just show. We need real policy in place. And and even like I'm, I'm with you, Dex. We talked about. I just don't want any guns because, especially with now, we know the the um, how corrupt a lot of these police departments are. So us today just so happens to be the second anniversary of the George Floyd uh, death, who was murdered by a police officer who had a gun and used it in a. I don't want to say in a piss poor but in a very irresponsible way for you to be a police officer. You're supposed to be a public servant. That man did not need, he should have never lost his life in that way at that moment. So no, and that's what I'm like, even with the cops, no. If I'm pulling up to a scene, there's no reason 
for you to come out with your guns pretty much ready to be blazing without assessing the situation first. Like we just, and then today it came up that Joe Biden did, did sign off on the police report um, reform bill. Um, let me see exactly what I wrote down. There's an executive order for police perform, uh, re police reform practices, and there will now be a national database of uh, police officers who have been brought up on charges or just too many reports of misconduct. The fact that this wasn't a thing before, okay, but we're going forward now. We are going forward, but overall, Get rid of the guns. I'm sorry. Police, people on the street. At this point, I don't even think handguns should be uh, a, an accessible, a, a available to people. I'm sorry. I think Not now. I think that's the part that sucks, though, because when you get rid of them, like, there are a lot of people who have these items for protection purposes, and mm -hmm. you make them illegal, you get rid of them, then those of us who are okay with guns and not out there shooting people, then we we don't really have a way of protecting ourselves against the people who are going to illegally get these guns. It's just, you just can't win in this situation. But I, do, I definitely don't think we need to have AR-15s, though. Like, we don't need that. And, and, like, with a handgun, if that's illegal and you're out there with a handgun, you're not killing 12 people with it. Like, you're not getting that many shots and that many rounds off. Like, you mm -hmm. in there with an AR-15 mutilating the body of 10-year-olds. Thank you. And that's why, and let's be clear, that's why they use those those auto, semi-automated guns, um, guns like that, because you don't have to really have aim. Yeah. You can just go in and just spray the whole, what they, the kids call on the street, spray the damn block up. Mm -hmm. That's the reason for it, is to just get multiple bodies out of here. What reason would any citizen on this street need to have that? Why? Why? Yeah. And again, I've been in situations, I've been in houses. I mean, an ex of mine was a huge gun advocate in the military. I remember he brought the AR-15, and I'm just looking at him like, Negro, what do you need? Why? And the idea behind being a gun advocate. Like, that just, it just, and I have friends who are really into guns. Mm -hmm. I just don't get it. I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand the fascination with a gun. I really, I just, even when I was younger, I wasn't even allowed to play with toy guns and stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I under, I know we all have our things that we're into, and you'd be looking like, why are you into that? But guns, I just, I can understand being fine with wanting to go to the range and shoot or even hunt. Mm -hmm. like, I get that, but having obsession, having an obsession with a gun, just feels weird to me. Cause like, it's not like something. It's Thank not thing in your everyday life. Like, it's not like something that you would even need in your everyday life. Like. What is it? I don't get it. Like, I, I, I don't understand the fascination with guns at all. I'm sorry. E.C. McLean said, uh, she made a wonderful point. I'm so glad you brought this up. We don't even talk about Columbine High School Massacre, April 20, 1999. Why is this still a problem? And it, I was thinking about that yesterday. It is so sad how we are ushering in a generation of kids or just people who yeah. will have no idea what it is to live life prior to. 99, I want to say I was might have been in high school or middle, I think high school at the time, and I just remember being in class when that happened, and it was just like, what the hell? Like, it really just felt like you were having an outer body experience and you didn't understand it. Fast forward 20 years later, I don't think any of us at that time could fathom that this would be an everyday part of our reality from the gun violence just happening on the streets. I mean, for a local story here recently, there are children marching in the city because they are tired of their neighborhoods being plagued and gun violence or just violence overall. They are sick of the bloodshed. Why is this still happening, America? How can you call yourself a world leader and a superpower and this is happening. You you're, have the ability to worry about everybody else's issues. And yes, America, I don't mind us saving the day. That's what we do. We aid people. But you need to aid what's happening at home. I am sick of this. Yeah, and it's, it's funny, too, because, like, Columbine really is a non-factor at this point. Like, like when people talk about it, it's just like, 
you Columbine just feels like like ancient history at this point because we don't have to point to Columbine to talk about a school shooting. We've seen it on we mm -hmm. saw it yesterday. Like a school shooting happened yesterday. We've seen like school shootings at Virginia Tech and like that like it, it just doesn't stop. Like um and then they're getting more extreme because they're killing like children at this point. So it's just kinda like a Sadly, Columbine is not even like a conversation. Like, it doesn't even get really get br brought up in conversation anymore. And I saw Marjane say something that I thought was really interesting, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. Um, she said, like, if I had a child, I wouldn't want to send them to school. The unfortunate thing about that, though, is that, like, if you don't send them to school, you'll have them at home, but people's houses are getting shot up. You'll take them to the grocery store. Yeah. Stores are getting shot up. You take them to the movies, but movies are getting shot up. So, like, is there really a safe place to put anybody? Like, are, are any of us safe anywhere? Thank you. And what is the what's the common denominator, Dex? What you mean? What's and what you just said? All the examples. What's the common denominator that you gave? Oh, like places that where you should be safe. Like all those are places that where you should be safe. Public places. Well, no, the common denominator is the guns. We could go back and do all of these things and feel safe. Get rid of the fun. like. What? That's what I'm not understanding. Like, it's, what is happening here? One of those things where it's just like, you guys are clearly, like, good with this because there's money involved. Like, that's clearly, that's all you care about is the money. And it's just yes. hardening. And what really makes me sad about it is that we're in the midst of a holiday weekend. And um, usually on holiday weekends, when the weather's nice and everything, we come back on Monday or Tuesday, there's a bunch of killings. And, like, I'm not looking forward to that this weekend. And I know it's going to happen. You would think, I mean, it's just sad because you would think with all the bloodshed we've happened so far, people would be like, okay, can we just get a weekend where we're like, no, no holiday, just put the guns down. But we know, and people are just always just going to act stupid, but Tweet. change has got to happen, and it's got to happen now. And the guy, the, the coach, Steve Kerr, made an amazing point when he said the biggest thing that resonated, that resonated with me in his speech was when he was like, there are 50 fucking people. Hold basically holding the rest of the country in a vice grip. Yeah. How? You, How is this okay? Um, Dylan made a comment, but like I think we might have missed it. I don't think we got a chance to see it, but... Um, Wait, what did he say? Uh, I don't know if you can see what he said, but if you can read it. He said, Dexter, your hair looks good. Uh, did you. you use little drops I was don't, telling you about? Don't worry about ah! that. But that part... That's why this guy's my favorite person in the group chat. I love him. He's amazing. Oh, oh okay. All right. Who's going to be your favorite guy tomorrow or gal? Dylan. That's it. Oh, Dylan. Not the fun fact. He oh, wow. So Dylan just said that Steve Kerr's dad had been assassinated. So yeah. I'm assuming that's why he it, it, it touched home. But it was a message that we all needed. But truthfully, the Toya, we're all going to be like that at some point or another. We're all going to know someone who has been affected by a uh, gun. <laughs> she's, so she's handed out for a session. <laughs> Y'all know this man cannot handle a compliment. Like, I I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> where did you? That's, I'm starting to feel, were you, were you ugly duckling when we were little? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I'm ugly now. <laughs> <laughs> no, sweetie, you was about to see. You should have said, "Ain't nothing ever been no nope. ugly about this." It's no. always been pressure, sweetie. No, when I was younger, my I was like a, a much skinnier, and them ears was like this. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I had to grow into my features. <laughs> a lot of people do. My brother Raekwon, he had to uh to grow into his head. I will never forget looking up, and this was at one point we lived. Uh, I think we were living in Virginia at the time, and me, my mom, and my stepdad were sitting outside talking, and we looked up at the window, and we saw Raekwon's big-ass head <laughs> running across the room, and I'll never forget my mama saying, oh, I hope he grow into that head, child, but we do. We grow into our feature. Yeah, we do. <laughs> For the most part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to grow into my big-ass lips. Ooh, having lips this size as a kid. But imagine... Yeah. Like this and being really skinny, like it was. I mean, I was still pulling them though, so it is what it is. <laughs> they, look, at the end of the day, they still wanted it, sweetie. Sweetie, <laughs> <laughs> what's big, sweetie? What's big?
And speaking of Carisha, really quickly, that for those who may not know, that is Carisha and um and uh Santana. Um, in later news that happened la last week, is Diddy using Carisha as a come up or like for relevancy? I'm thinking this is what it could be, Dexter. Like, so last week, if you guys didn't get the gist of it, Pop Pop Sean Combs had the girls in a tizzy over his ass, over his senior citizen. Now, he's not a senior just yet. He ain't that old, but still. You too old to be caught up in these festivities between, I guess, one of Diddy's side chicks or one of the harem started feeling some type of way because you know lately on these ig streets on these internet streets we have been seeing diddy and carisha out here living their best lives it has been for months now diddy has been dropping multiple bags on her well i guess the one of the chicks in the harem said not today i'm sick of it and that is my man so she put a little post out there to let us know that's my man too <laughs> as well <laughs> also <laughs> i'm his plus plus one as well <laughs> i just y'all girl i mean dang. i'm gonna give these girls a pat well some of them a pat because how old is carisha carisha and jt are they still in their 20s right 25 26 yeah oh, okay so they're still young huh they old enough no, not at that age. No, you're not. That's sir. Depending on how much experience you have under your belt, it's 40, 50 year olds running around doing the nut shit. But you know, but. You know <laughs> to be sharing a dude. Like, who? We sharing. It's like, what is this? Like, Maybe Carisha told a girl, like, girl, what are you doing? Like, okay, you going to have them on Tuesday through Thursday? Like, Tuesday through Thursday? Like, you know what we get into. But here's the thing with the girls. I don't care who you are. I don't care what age you are, to be honest. It's never giving fighting publicly over some, over pop pop. Really over, if it ain't your kids, what we about fighting publicly over? And, like, did he let, the, I don't know if he posted or let the girl post a picture of them, like, kissing and stuff. Like, like, it's not like one of those things where the girl's, like, making something up and putting it out there. Like, he's letting her do it. Like, I, I don't know. That just feels crazy to me. Like, I just feel like with guys, like, we if we're if we're gonna do dirt like we're careful with the dirt that we do he's not even trying to be careful which means he doesn't care if you get mad or not either one of y'all that's mm. you know what it is it what, what pinnacle 130 it's mr love what did you think it was when you came up here it's it's love everybody gets the love at least it's Diddy they are sharing and not the local. But no, we ain't going to say at least it's Diddy. Because this girl's out here sharing the local dudes, too. This is ridiculous. And I, I need it to stop. And I don't think it's a good thing that the two of them are sharing Diddy because it's public. So, like, people are looking at you. Thank you. At least if it's the local dude, it's not on a public platform where people are going to be sitting up on their lives talking about you. <laughs> like, Hello. Hello. Thank you. That's what I think. I just don't understand. It's like this new era of girls. Like, at least back in the day, our great aunties and aunties and them, even some of we, what are we doing? Oh, we grown. We, gonna, we grown. We grown. We ain't messy. We grown. When it's time to abort mission, it's time to abort mission. We out. You got what you got out of it. We out of here. Never. I ain't never seen, heard one of my great aunts talk about a story of them having to beat some bitch's ass because she popped fly. Because guess what? The other girl knew, and she knew the boundaries and the respect. <laughs> it's like now there are no boundaries, and everybody wants to be seen. It's insane. Before, men were more careful. Like, there are men who have double families. They have two families, two family homes and all that kind of stuff like that. Like, men were definitely more careful back in the day. Now, because I mean, y'all y'all going to fight each other, so why do we need to be careful? Y'all stupid. Women are dumb. That's your problem, not ours. Thank and that's true. I hate to say that. I don't want to fully go in on that, but it's true. Y'all see exactly what it is, and you're signing up for it. That's why I didn't even understand. If that girl posted that picture up, and I'm Carisha, but Carisha's very young. But if I'm Carisha being 38-year-old Carisha, I'm not responding to that. You look stupid. You see these blogs? This nigga's face is in my ass on a regular basis. You see the pictures? You look dumb. I'm not responding to none of it. With that, get that bread, get that 
ahead, get that bread, and leave. Wait, what? <laughs> I like. I realized. I realized that Carisha was an Aquarius too. I discovered that because she said, "You out here having sex with a billionaire, and you got carpet in your house." I said, "That is the mo that like Aquarius when they say things, when we say things, like when we argue, it's like it's it's an argument and it's shady, but it's always petty and it's like unnecessarily petty." And what Marlo said a couple of weeks ago in Housewives of Atlanta. Bitch, your Bentley, your Bentley was used. What? Or no, you gotta get a used <laughs> Rolls Royce. What? <laughs> is, she, is she an Aquarius too? Yeah, well, who, Nene? No, uh, uh, Mar Marla. Yeah, she's an Aquarius. I keep telling you there's things that'll pop up next, and I'm like, this is, she is, Dexter is Marla. Aquarius? This is, this is the thing. <laughs> Aquariuses don't fight fair. Like when they're backed up into a corner or they feel like they need to attack, like they just go unnecessarily low. I've I've noticed it like, with with us. Like we just and and the crazy part about it, we we think we're justified too. Like we think when we go oh and we say these things, like the person had it coming to the camp coming for them or whatever. And it's like we can't be like that. <laughs> we gotta do better. Like, well, listen. But terrible. I'm going to give y'all a pass because I'm all for giving people grace. I am going to give you grace, all the grace, but you can't have it. Eventually, while that grace runs the hell up, <laughs> runs out. So if I passed through, and you know me in, in life, I call it a three strike room, rule. If I passed three other opportunities or even two other opportunities, and here we come again. Nah, I gotta let you know about your stuff now. <laughs> Aquariuses are also very aloof. So, like, we do these things. And I know this. I know that we do these things. And we don't... It's not that we don't realize that we're being hurtful. We don't care. Like, we know what we're doing. But we also are like, well, you did something to me, too, so you should be able to take this. Who's gonna track me, boo? It's, it, Aquarius is just... I love us, but we are and, terrible. And Dex, what's your favorite Aquarius line? My favorite one? You can't beat me up. You know you can't beat me up, right? You, you, <laughs> you know you can't beat me up. You know you can't beat my ass, right? <laughs> yeah. I fun Aquarius. It's so funny. And I think that's one of the reasons why me and you get along so well. And even with Brandon, because um, Brandon's a Scorpio. And I think, like, that's just why our trio kind of works. But even with me, like, I'm a Leo, but my moon sign is Aquarius, and my rising sign is, is Scorpio. So I think that's kind of like when we all get together, we're more alike than we are different. And I'm telling y'all, if y'all could just take a peep inside of our group chats, we are so childish. Like, we really bring the kid out in one another where I'm like, are we all in our 30s? We're 30s, right? Yeah, we, well, y'all a little closer to 40s, but yeah. <laughs> see? <laughs> uh, see? Here you go. Entertainment. See? See? I was wondering if my friend Dylan was on here. Dylan, I don't have no trail with them. I'm, it's just me and you, buddy. Um, somebody. Oh, that's what we do then? You pulling a Brandon? Somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's what we do? I told you. Somebody said. Uh, that's what, and also, for the people who don't know the chat, there's no loyalty, by the way. <laughs> the loyalty comes. It changes as the day changes. <laughs> Somebody said, what do Virgos do? From my experience, Virgos don't do nothing. Like, Y'all just exist. Virgos... No, we don't go do that. They don't do nothing. No, Virgo... I don't know no Virgos that do nothing. Like, what do they do? Beyonce's a Virgo, right? This September. Yes, and then yes, we wrong, Joe. B. Raw is a uh, is a Virgo. That's and, one of your best friends. Yeah, but like, I told you, when you tell me stuff about him, I'd be like, shocking to me. Like, I, Virgos, yeah. they just are just around. Don't you do Virgos are great people. My grandfather was a Virgo, an amazing person. But Virgos, they have the tempers, and Virgos can be very nasty. Just very nasty. Virgo, I say Virgos don't do nothing. My mom is a Virgo. Do you know this morning she texted the family group chat and was like, guys, I have a really weird feeling about today. Be, um, be careful. I'm praying for everybody. She texted all, all of us at 8 o'clock this morning and turned her phone off. Like, that is the anxiety. Like, you're, like you're, you're, you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, how you gonna do that and then turn the damn phone off? Mommy, no. <laughs> we haven't talked all night. Like, Virgos are Y'all are. Where did I for say clinch a 
girls, because the bird goes in the chat. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> I'm Libra. EC McQueen said they sneaky with their ish. I don't, well, I'm sure they are. I don't know too much about that. But for the most part, I do love, I get along amazing with, with Virgos. But when a Virgo and a Leo, we come like this because we too strong. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Favorites are um, Tauruses and um, and and Leos. Like I, I, a lot of my friends are Tauruses. A lot of them are Leo, Leos, and I get along well. Yeah. Although I do think Tauruses are just mean people. Like they're they're mean. They are. But Tauruses can have a very mean. Okay, so I'll just they are. So, but I've never run into a Taurus where, like, on the surface, they're mean. From what I know, the Tauruses are, it takes them a while to get there. But when they snap on you, my brother, you know, I had my brother Latif before. One of the nicest people in the world. My cousin Crystal, just nice people. Don't piss them off, though. Because when them bullhorns come out. It's going to be over for you. And it's funny because a Taurus will go zero to a fucking hundred in less than a second. You'll be like, I thought you was cool. How boy ended up on the ground. You was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Somebody said something about a Sagittarius. Sagittarius is December. Yeah, Sagittarius are good people. Mimi Lee, she's a Sagittarius. I love Sagittarius. They're all, they usually have the best time with Sagittarius. It's bipolar. funny. They bipolar. If she's one, then they must be bipolar. Actually, my nephew's a Sagittarius. Oh, they definitely bipolar. They, they don't know. You bipolar, yeah. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't they say bipolar because it's like a medical diagnosis. But Sagittarius is all over the place. Like, they don't know what they want. Like, they're just kind of like... And they rude. Yeah. They, they don't even brace. When, when it's... Uh, when a, a, wait, when a Sagittarius is rude, like a lot of other signs, at least they'll brace for impact. Mm-mm. Oh, damn, I can't even get a morning shot. You just gonna cut my fucking head off? Oh, yeah. Dylan and Tasha are Sagittarius. No. Then that makes sense. Well, I don't know about Tasha, but with Dylan, that makes all the sense. Right. Like, damn, like, I, what happened? You act like we got history. Wait, they said, now you know y'all a mess. The worst ones. Huh? Gemini's. They said, what about Gemini's? The worst ones. Y'all just, oof. I don't even want to. I ain't gonna say they're the worst ones, but y'all, Gemini's, y'all crazy shit. <laughs> They're like the truest. The two-face. It's the two-face. You don't know who you're going to get from day to day. No, a lot of people don't think this, but I've never met a Scorpio who I didn't think was a little phony. I think Scorpios are a little phony sometimes. They're very sometimey people. And like irrational sometimes too. <laughs> Scorpios, I think that people always try to lead with Scorpios. They're sexy. They have sex to set the third. It's a lot more to them. Like Scorpios are like very here's the and like because when you piss a Scorpio off, now here's the thing. But you, you don't necessarily you could breathe and it will piss a Scorpio off. Uh -huh. So it's like, bro, what happened to to garner that kind of reaction. That's the Scorpios, but, but they are the best lovers. They're very confident. Again, Scorpio rising. So I, I bang with a lot of Scorpios, but you don't Maybe want to piss a Scorpio off. I'm telling you, don't do it. But again, you don't even know what, what, what will piss them off. Again, you could breathe the wrong way. Fuck you, I breathe so far. Or, 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 or wear a jacket. <laughs> Oh boy, you know, I'd be sad. Take the hat off. Then I Take realized, it off. Then I realize who I know that's a part of this. I'm like, oh, dang, I shouldn't be saying that because, but they, it fits y'all. Y'all are like this. Take it off now. Don't <laughs> <laughs> hurt your damn feelings. Why you got that on? Damn. Can you say hello? <laughs> well, we'll get to that part. But why you coming here like this? <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I love having fun with the signs. It's so funny because sometimes I'd be like, yo, for us to all be like, we all walk in our own individualities, but it's so weird how even if you are somewhat into astrology, and I do like follow a few of them, some are like, just like, girl, what the hell? But for the most part, I'm like, yo, how the fuck are we all living the same life? It can't be possible. 
I feel like we need to do an astrology sign support group to where like we start some type of a uh, Reddit or something, some type of forum where it's a safe space and you can connect with people of your sign and let's talk about what we're going through, buddy. Let's give support. How are we doing this? Got to hear about Aries child. A now listen, Aries, they my ace boon coons. Aries is supposed to be my main sign, my, my main squeeze sign. But I've been with a few Aries before, and I just don't think there's, that's going to work out for me. But my mom is an Aries. Love her. My best friend. Aries, good people. I do. For the most part. I just looked up. Aries is March 21st. One of my closest friends is an Aries. And mm -hmm. they, Aries, to me, like, y'all are, like, like pushovers a little bit. And then y'all be trying to, like, stand up, and we don't take y'all that serious. And, like, yeah, like that's... Like, like, stop it. Like, you know, no, we walk all over y'all. Like, right, did you think so? Like, I think Aries are just really nice people. But then, like, they try to, like, like buck up sometimes. And it's just like, sit down. Yeah. So Aries, they're another one. Very nice. They're usually going to lead with kindness, hair to die for. They really are a lot of times the life of a party. But the Aries is another one. They got that sign. My mom, she will cuss you the fuck out for no reason. Like, you know, like, that. I'll never forget my mom when I was little, I said to her. Because, you know, it was a thing where you would just call people, oh, you're so crazy. Like, you're so crazy. I called my mom when I was, mom, you're so crazy. Who the fuck you call her crazy? That's your way of working. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, when Ari Aries get mad about stuff, they're, and they're irrational about it, and you can't take them serious. That's why we don't think but you know what? I think what it boils down to, Dexter, is because most Aries usually don't bring up any issues. Like, if they take issue with something at the time, they wait for it to pile up, and then they just explode. And you be like, well, damn, I didn't even know we had a problem. That's, that's my niece. My niece does that. She's she's an April Aries. And she will catch mm -hmm. it, and it's just like, sit down. Like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's what they do. You be like, well, were you ever going to? How am I know? How am I going to address the issue if I don't know what's the issue, sweetie? And look at you, you all out of sorts. What's going on? Talk about it. <laughs> um. Okay. I want to get into this. Okay, I did do the. Um. Oh, we talked about Diddy. Oh, did you guys see? Uh, Calvin Kaepernick. He is. It's a possibility he'll be returning to the NFL today. It was reports that he was practicing with the Las, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Are you excited about You know, I'm a sports person, but are you excited about this, Dexter? I think that, no, I'm not. But I also think that it's one of those things where um, the Raiders coach was saying, like, they, oh, there's a, there's a place for him. He's been saying that for a while. And I think now it's kind of like, okay, like, you put your money where your mouth is. And I'm not mad at that. I think it's a little weird that people would want to play after comparing the NFL to, like, a slave draft. I, to me, it's odd that he would even want to be a part of that still, but if that's what you want to do, you feel comfortable with the, you know what, though, now that I think about it, we all complain about a job when we're getting ready to leave that job. And if, the, and if yeah. the money was right and it was time to go back, we probably go back. I know. I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there's that. <laughs> I'll try it again. Let's go. <laughs> okay, go, ahead. go ahead, get your money, do your thing. Well, look, this one you say, you piss me off, you know I'll leave. <laughs> you know what? <I'm> <laughs> Stop, because I'm about to start to enter. Uh, you, you know, what, what you say? What, you, what, what happened? What you said? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be sitting up there. They not answer no emails. They not? Um, Pinnacle, Pinnacle Girl, I think I got that wrong. Pinnacle Girl said, do you think he'll play? I don't think he I don't think they would play him. I think they would have maybe like a backup quarterback, but I don't think he would actually play, though. No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, of course, a lot of teams will be, especially with everything going on, racism just won't go away. Of course, for optics, for the it makes them look good. Look, we are we're we with we fuck with the culture. It's but are you really going to play? I mean, you're not going to tell that until the games, yeah. the season really starts, and we'll be able to tell if you really cared about him and like really believed in his talent, or if you did it for ops. Yeah, for optics base. Yeah. So there's that. 
Um, actually, there's a study that came out, Dexter, and you and I have gone back and forth on this in the past mm-hmm. because, you know, with my potty mouth, I, I feel like I have cursing Tourette's. Like, sometimes it just pops out and I can't help it. Well, there has been this new study outside of UC Davis where scientists have said that it's actually okay to curse in front of your kids. It does not cause damage the way people like to allude that it does, or not allude, but um, basically just want to act like it does. Um, but what the scientists, what they did say, though, was actually the most harmful for them. It's less about the uh, the actual curse word, but more about if you're aiming slurs at somebody or you are being extremely, like, mean-spirited and talking down on them and the kids hear it. Because that's the repetitive behavior that they pick up and take into adulthood. So it's more about how you treat people less about the words so i mean as far as what according to this study i'm going to be a fucking fantastic mother no you're not (laughs) you're gonna be a terrible mother you're gonna be a you're gonna be a terrible mother and you're gonna have bad kids it's gonna go to school and they're gonna be cussing it's horrible to be cursing in front of your children and cursing around these kids i don't care how politely you say how polite what do you say quickly you're Please go clean your effing room. Like, what do you mean how you... No, like, don't curse in front of your kids. Like, that's terrible. Well, did your teacher ask you? But, like, Mom, you can't believe this dumbass question this woman asked me. (laughs) (laughs) I I always feel like cursing limits... For me personally, I feel like cursing limits my vocabulary. So, like, instead of using proper words and using words that make sense, if I use a curse word, it's just like you're just throwing it out there. And it's just like... I like to be expressive and communicate and use my words. And I just feel like cursing is, it's just not a good way to do it. Like you just shouldn't be doing it. So I'm a proponent of using my words. And if they don't come across sometimes, depending on the situation, then you follow them up with your fist. And sometimes it just has to happen. Y'all got to stop this cursing stuff. Like I want it to stop. (laughs) Because it's getting to the point, like, look at this, you putting stuff like this out, that means these kids are going to really be in school cursing. Like, teacher, I don't understand this S word. And it's just like, come on. Like, I don't need that. They're doing it. My thing is with my kids, I knew what the hell I was doing when I was a kid. That's the thing. A lot of these parents, y'all swear that y'all kids are, mm, they're the sweetest little angel. Yep. And, uh, don't do anything. Do you not remember being a kid in the shit that the round table discussions y'all would have at the damn cabin's lunch table and all of y'all talking about shit? You should have no idea, but you're talking about it. You don't know what this shit means, but you're just throwing it out there. These kids already know what these words mean. A lot of these kids is out here fucking already. I think if you throw out just the fuck every now and again, they know. They already know what it means. I- I- you won't see it just said um, the kids are doing it anyway and they're sitting away because they because they see it at school. So you want me to put you as a grown adult father on the same level as these kids that they be with in the school? What is wrong with you? You got to raise them up right, Dex. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a village, Dex. And sometimes cursing is like a, a stress cope a, a stress um coping mechanism tool so the the real thing is is guiding the babies the right way in the proper curse words and and using them in their in their proper terminology i think if we guide the babies that way we'll be good ec mclean said that you're gonna have bad kids i might i might have bad kids but i bet they won't be cussing and they won't hear me curse. You better make sure not gonna be cussing when they be slapping your ass upside the head. <laughs> they, but see, like y'all kids are this thing, like, y'all cursing and fighting in front of y'all kids. Y'all kids are gonna be the violent ones, not mine. My kids are gonna just be looking at y'all like how I be looking at y'all, like, oh my god, they are cursing again. That's how my getting kids. beat on. Getting beat on. <laughs> well, you don't see it said you don't even have to cuss at home at as soon as they get off to school with little Ray Ray and men cussing up a storm on the playground. That's what they do. I remember being a kid of like maybe 10, 11 years old. You thought it was cool to throw a curse word out every now and again. Then in adulthood, you'd be like, 
Oh, it's not as, it's not cool. Now we cursed out of necessity. That's the problem. Like the kids cursed out of coolness. We do it out of necessity because sometimes a good curse word, it gives that extra punch on a delivery that you, you need. Like no. you might not understand like what I'm trying to say if I don't yes, I will. give you. Yes, I will. But I will say this though, because I personally, I don't, I don't know many people with kids who do this, but um, you won't see it. My friend Bondell in the, in the comments, he does have a child and like he does post about his child often. And she's very successful. You know what I mean? Like as far as like being a well-rounded well child and he curses mm -hmm. the child. So like if I'm using that real life example, I, I, I guess I have to agree with you. I don't want to, but like if, from what I've seen of the child, she does seem respectful. She gets straight A's. Yes. Like the, I've never seen him curse around her, but apparently he does. So I guess I kind of stand corrected. Yes, and the baby will be better for it as she grows up into adulthood. When she starts cussing him out. Ain't gonna happen. Usually the kids, usually the parents who are like that around their kids, the kids know better. So here's the thing, and that's another thing I don't like, which we will see. I don't want to stereotype, but we do know how some of the cultures, if you've ever been in their house, it's normal for them to be around the dinner table. Ma, what the fuck? <laughs> Walking, get the fuck off of my hair, mom! Get the fuck out of my hair! Don't make me laugh. Stop. You go. Don't make me laugh. I don't want to laugh at this. But I, I, I get it. I get it. The kids are growing up. If your kid, well, kid, that's that, that's going to happen in your house. You've you you've taken on this role. You're okay with the kids coming home, or actually, no, you don't want them cursing. You just don't mind if they beat on you. They just can't say a curse word they can beat on you though like i don't want my kids to curse around me at all i don't want them to curse at all they're not going to beat on me but if they disagree with something that i'm saying or disagree with something that i'm doing i want them to be able to express that to me kids should kids should be able to express how they feel to their parents daddy i disagree with you not paying cash for this for this iphone 30. then we have what's up have a conversation about that we Gotta have what? <laughs> I, the kid and I have to have a conversation because like, I need to respect them and meet them where they are. Oh, I can't wait till these kids start whipping on your ass. Why would they? I would be like, put the phone on. Call, put the group call on. <laughs> Zoom so we can see this. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. I wish. Okay. Now, I'm all for it because do I... Do I come from the generation of where they say kids should be seen, not heard? I yes, that. I do. Do I subscribe to that? Not 100%. But if it's some shit that mommy already told you, no. And you want to sit here and have the nerve to say, well, mommy, we should discuss. What's the discussion? All right, go in there, pack your bags. You won't go live with your grandma or grandpops. Dad, smack, I'm going to send them over there because not, I you don't pay one bill in here. Your dad would definitely sit and have conversations. He's not going to do anything. Have you met Leonard Smack? <laughs> Look at Buster. <laughs> <laughs> what Buster say? Wait, chill with these comments. My white church parents weren't playing that game me. <laughs> Listen, Buster, you, because you're, was from the trenches. When you raised in the trenches, you do a little things a bit different with your kids. I, I guarantee you, there are people from the trenches. They not going home cussing their parents out because they pair. I they scared. Always make this a black and white thing. I don't really think this. I, I'm not white, and I, this is how I want to raise my kid. I'm not. Well, then maybe our black people need to step it up. Stop hitting like leave these kids alone. I think you should have conversations with your children. Like you shouldn't, you should never hit them. I don't think you should be hitting the kids. I don't think you should. Shit. <laughs> Go ahead. You hit your kids. What you say? I would never hit. I don't. I don't hit no kids. I couldn't do that. Listen, from eight to eighty, you gonna get these hands. That's. 
eight to eighty. The reason I say, like, I think kids are like humans. I, I think they're humans, and I think we should treat they're them like humans. They're humans, and I think we should treat them with the utmost respect. So, like, if me and you were sitting together, and you said something that I didn't like, or you did something I didn't like, I'm not gonna pop you. I, I'm not gonna do that to you. So I'm not gonna do it to a child either. Again, eight to eighty. You getting these hands? That's why I can't be a teacher. What the fuck did you just say to me? Now let me catch a teacher cursing at my child. I pro. Wait, can we bring Vondell in? Cause he's uh. And yeah, yeah, let's bring Vondell on. I tag me and you won't see it. And especially. Yeah, let's just bring Bondell in. Hold on. Bondell, you on here, sweetie. There we go. We bringing you in. He has he has a daughter. He's a father of a daughter. I think she's 10. Yeah. Oh, and he's a dad. He's a girl dad. Hey, Bondell. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bondell, you are the actual only parent on here. What would you like to offer up to the conversation? Please guide us, because apparently we need help. First and foremost, I want to give a, send a shout out and praise everybody that's on the live chat. How are you doing? Second of all, Dex, I love you. I love you, brother. When I say I love you, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. But there's certain things when it comes to parenting that you kind of got to understand. First and foremost, a child must mind at all times. Now, when you mean mind, mind. Man, have to be honor thy mother and thy father so thy days will be long. You know what I'm saying? That's number one. Uh, at the end of the day, you have to, we don't give, the problem now is that we're giving children too many options, choices, and, and I get that. I, I get that they should be expressive. I understand that they should um, be able to do other things that, you know, I understand it. But once you're living in a, once you, you understand, you got to separate child from adult. These kids can't buy clothes. They can't, uh, uh, drive a car, they can't make decisions, they can't make financial things, they can't do nothing themselves. Us, it's, it's our job to groom and shape them to, not to what, some people try to do it the way they want it to be, but to to see what their child is going to be. You know what I'm saying? You have to support whatever decision they make. Um, you know, if you're going out and you're spending money, you have to teach them financial things and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't choose to do that. You have to show them because if they, if we don't teach them, how would they know? So now they're choosing to do all the wrong things or the things that may seem right because they have no guidance. So it all starts with guidance, you know what I'm saying? And, and I do blame certain situations because I just had a conversation about this, um, how households are different. Everybody's household is different from the trenches, from the upscale to the middle class. Everybody's household is different. So if we have a school, right, let's say public school. And there's certain kids that's coming from middle class. It may be somebody lying in the upper class community that's getting the middle class. You know what I'm saying? Get the address so their kids can go to a certain school. However the case may be, and you have all these different demographics of kids in the school. And your child might be the most professional or the most, most you know, the most outstanding child. But when they come home, they got a little slang. They got a little walk to them. You know what I'm saying? They got a little yep. twang on them. And then you as a parent are like, I didn't raise my child to be, excuse me, like, it's, who are you talking to when you say, hey, ma, or what? I wish I would say what. Or, or Child. like, man, listen, it's certain things you got you, to separate you, from the father, the mother, and the child. Like, you shouldn't fear your parents. Like, right now, I want you guys. When I you do. I'm free of mother. I'm taller, I'm strong, and I'm bigger than my mother. My mother stepped on her foot. It's a wrap. I am not no, dealing with no, You are too old. What I want you to do this weekend, when, you, mom, <laughs> when you see your mom, I want you to tell her, we're equals now. You are my... <laughs> Sorry, bro. I left my life too much. I already seen Jesus. I, I seen Jesus already, bro. I'm good. I grew up and I, and I got in trouble. I didn't got my ass with many a day. I didn't seen Christ. You got to hit... Thank you, Bondell. I can't say that to my mom. Hey, if, you do that, if, you tell, if, <laughs> if you tell your mom, tell you, you too. If you tell your mom that and they try to hit you, you have to hit them back. Like, you have to. <laughs> like, you have to. Bro. I love you, bro, but there's certain <laughs> things in life you just don't do. And that is one of them. Wait, okay, now, what if you know, know. If you didn't told, to did told me to do that to my father, we'd have, hey, it'd have been nothing. I ain't got no love for the man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it a thousand. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> bro, no, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't do that. Bro. Thank you, Vondell. Dexter, get Miss Vicky in on the line and, and Gary O, because Dexter's capping over here. I love you, bro, but. 
Wait till you become a wait till you wait till you get that child. Don't call me talking about some Von Dell. What is don't call me? I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna sip my tea and laugh. I'm like, uh uh, be uh, give conversations and be yeah. concerned. Do all that. Yeah. Don't whoop them. You better not take your bed off or throw nothing across the room because I'm telling you, it's gonna be something that they're gonna make you go off, bro. You all that niceness is gonna go out the window. <laughs> You know, that's just gonna sit. He's gonna hold hands. They're gonna do <laughs> breath work, and he's gonna say, "Now, why would you come home and knock Daddy upside his head yep. like that?" Yeah, I told you, what if I, what if I, then, calm down. Let's talk about this. What about step? Do you think they get the same respect that you give a regular? Like, I shouldn't say regular parent, but would 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 they get the same respect? Do you think they should get the same respect? As a step parent and a regular parent, well, it all depends because we do know the evil step parent is a thing. But at the end of the day, if that step parent is is, is and a lot of times there are step parents that make sure to treat their them kids better than their own if they have any, because they are trying to break that stereotype. But I feel like so no. if it's a good parent, if you're living under this roof, you have to respect me. I'm sorry. No if ands or buts about it. I fear you. I don't have to fear you. And yes, the fuck you do. Yes, you do. And that was Raymond Anthony said. There are times you need to fear your parents out of respect. My mother, for instance, Kelly, Kelly Charleston, that woman is every bit of what? Five, two, five, four. You know, I box now, so I could. I could probably take her, Lay her. but Lay her. <laughs> uh, that woman will murder me. All five, five, two, five, four, going to turn into seven foot tall, quick, fast, and I'm out of here. You should always have that fear of your parent to where you, and right now, my parents, they're my best friends. Some of the shit we be talking about, I'll be like, I don't think we're supposed to be having this conversation because you're my parent. But with that said, there is still a major respect level, and I will never take it but so far with them. Not take it but so far with me, or I'll pay their chest to. You want what? If my parents took it too far with me, because we're good friends now, but don't take it too far with me because I'm not one of your little friends. <laughs> That's why I let them know. <laughs> That's what I let them know. Don't play with me. <laughs> I can't wait to send this episode. Actually, I'm going to uh, screen record that part, yeah. and I'm just going to fire it off to Miss Vicky. I'm going to have to, because she needs... Shouldn't be, but you know better. She needs to be careful. That's what she needs, to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> you walk on eggshells? How, around me? You better. I don't play. <laughs> you won't see us that that's definitely going to have the brother-daughter child and they gonna run through you but i also do agree with i think sometimes with that actually daughters may be worse with their their mothers than the fathers i'd say that because a lot of dads i know like my dad he's not putting his hands on a girl like i'll be my boy's ass all day but my girl i'm not going to do that so maybe that's why girls kind of get away with like oh that's daddy's princess and be giving mommy hell because mommy nine times out of ten has to be the enforcer <laughs> yeah. Wait, what'd you say that? No, no, I, I just, I was just laughing. I think this is. Yes, yeah, so I think you will have a girl. I think you'll be good if you have the girl because you actually it would be perfect for you because you don't have to be the enforcer and Dex will always be the good guy. I'm gonna be the good guy regardless. <laughs> Ain't no competition, sweetie. Not in this house. I'm always the good guy. Okay, no matter what. This is why she. This is why she doesn't want to have kids with me. I told her recently <laughs> that um, I'm always gonna be the kid's favorite, but I'm always gonna be your favorite too. So if the kids get in trouble and you yell at them, I'm gonna say to, say to the kid, I can't stand her. She always yelling this and the third. And then I'm gonna come to you, come to my wife, and be like, these kids are ridiculous. Like you deserve better than that. I'm gonna play the field. I'm gonna be everybody's best friend in the house. And watch. Everybody, best friend, keep playing because you play that card. You go, everybody in the house gonna jump right on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's hopefully that you will have the girls because the boys, them the ones where oh god, I've seen it happen. Well, have your dad? Has your parents ever had to like your dad ever had to pop on any of you and your brothers? Look. Where it's like, damn, daddy, where did come from? Look, he knew. Oh, he knew. So he knew better? He knew. Eight-year-old, eight-year-old Dex, having a bad day, say something smart, 
DJ Gary, you you say something crazy to DJ Gary O, and Gary O was just gonna let it slide. And unless he want to catch these eight year old hands, he better let us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what time is it? I'm off the TV's off. I don't know what time it is. Ten. How much is it? Seven, what time? Seven ten. Seven ten. All right, it's almost time because we got on at uh, six o'clock on the dot. Um, one other store. Well, I don't know. We're not going to keep it too long. Nick Cannon on a, another baby moon. About to have. Okay. I wonder how. We should get Nick on the show. We should do a, a child rearing episode again and bring Nick on because Nick like, if Nick is like me, if you have eight kids, you definitely not. You don't see them enough to beat them. He's clearly doing what I'm doing, so he would agree with me. <laughs> Your mama sure is evil, ain't she? Exactly. <laughs> Why are you so mean? Here go three thousand dollars. Have a good time. <laughs> favorite, you know it. Okay, we did see that. I did see something. There was oh well, God, flossing goes wrong. I showed you the video of the car, or do you want to rehash really quick the American Airlines fight? No, because people are not going to agree with me with the fight. They're going to get mad. Okay. All right. So flossing goes wrong. Recently, uh, there's a story that went viral about a rapper by the name of Star Dawkins. Well, she was at a car, uh, I believe, I don't know where she was. She might have been at a car lot shopping for cars, but outside was her, um, her Lamborghini truck. And, you know, for most people on the streets, they usually don't see cars like that on the, you know, on the, you just on the street. So, and I've seen it all the time. You know, y'all love going to Miami taking pictures in front of cars that ain't y'all's. But that's not a here nor there. <laughs> so anyway, she was outside. The lady saw the car. Oh, this is nice. Her and the guy were uh, ogling it. You know, they wanted to pull that camera up, take a picture. I don't know why the lady said, you know what? Let's take it a step further. I'm going to open the door. <laughs> and I need you to get a picture of me sitting inside the car. Soon as that happened... Rappers, what what the hell is her name? Star Dawkins at this point. Actually, Dawkins, that's she might be family, so I see why she reacted that way. <laughs> Got up off her damn seat, cussed them out to filth. You have to. Don't you dare. To. Like, 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 I'm okay with you looking at the car, admiring the car. Like, okay, I get that. But to open somebody's car door, like, at some point, like, you have to know that you've taken it too far. And then when you're approached to sit there, what's the issue? I thought I was at the car show. Ain't that what y'all do with the car shows? Speaking of cars, though, like, this is off topic, but, like, not really. I want y'all to abandon road rage. I saw a video today of one of my friends who was driving, and um, basically, like, he blew his horn or whatever, and then the person got upset and, like, did the thing where they rolled their window down and cursed him out or whatever. Y'all got to stop doing that. Y'all have to stop doing that because you never know who you're pulling up on. And you get That's that true. red light after you didn't curse at somebody and they pull that thing down. You don't know what they have in their car with them. Y'all got to stop doing that. And I see it all the time where people, okay, somebody blew their horn, somebody cut you off, whatever. But you, and, and blowing your horn is one thing, but to roll your window down and try to, like, say something to the person, you just don't know what's going to happen when you get caught at that light with that person. Be careful. Hello, sir. You're right, Dex, but uh, I'm an offender. <laughs> you, you live in Philadelphia. And you know. That's why I got to get it while I get it. If I'm popping, and usually if I'm a pop, it ain't going to be for no horn thing. It's something you definitely did. And if you tried to take my life, well, okay, but then do you, okay. if y'all gonna do that, y'all gonna be doing this stuff like because the I saw the video, I saw exactly what happened. I gotta see this video. You gotta show me. Well, I'll show you his Instagram. You follow him on Instagram. I just, I just look at his page. So, um, <laughs> so basically, he rolled his window down, and then he started to say something back to the other person. The other person sitting there with their, their hands on ten and two now. Now keep that same energy and roll that window down and and go back and forth with me since you wanted to do it. Let's go back and forth, yeah. and eventually if we got this car and I beat you up, like, that's on you. It just, it has to happen. I'll never forget driving down 63rd Street. This guy had to be high. 
And the way he like got in front of me where, you know, if you're used to driving in the city, we have trolleys here. So rule of thumb, you do not pass the trolley when the lights are blinking because time and time again, people get off of the damn truck. Like they're getting off and they're hit by cars. This one guy, he had to be high as shit. And I'm usually calm when I approach people. So got up on him, rolled my window down. He looked. I said, hi, how are you? I'm I say, everything good? Well, I said, sir, was it that deep to get in front of me? You were about to kill this person getting off the trolley? Okay, don't do that again. Be blessed. Have a great day. And I'll keep it moving. It's rare that I'll go back and forth like that. But you got to you gotta get a even a polite checking. You got to know. I'm okay. Because if you don't, you want to continue this behavior. I'm okay with a person blowing their horn at me. But if I see you mouthing off, then we got I got. Don't say nothing to me. Blow your horn, and <laughs> go my, but don't say nothing to me. And don't say nothing about me. Definitely don't roll your window. Because if I, if you roll your window down and I got something I can throw on your car, I'm going to do it. So stop. And we're going. It, look, when it's up, it's up. <laughs> <laughs> when, it's, when it's up, wait, what, God, what's the song next? Up and stuck? Oh, no. If it's up, then it's stuck. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't be shy, Mexico. <laughs> If it's up, then it's stuck. What it do? But with that said, everybody, please be careful. Do not approach every situation the same. Please pick up on context clues because we have ain't listen, I don't care how much fucking heart you got. If you pull up and you realize the person, oh, something ain't wrapped too tight upstairs. Walk away gracefully because it ain't that damn deep. So please, but every now and again. Once you size up the op, what's up? You got to, what, do we have a problem? <laughs> it's you. All right, I think it's time to go. Oh, yeah, celebrity, stop with your fake-ass outrage. We heard for weeks about Will Smith punching, having one-on-one -on -one contact, punching one black man in the face on the stage, but yet, Where's your anger about all this crime going on and this gun violence? I mean, yeah, it's good to hear senators, but can we get back to focusing on the real things that matter? Yeah, what Will did was wrong, but I need why all the energy ain't attributed to this, because this should really piss you off. This is what should really be traumatizing for you. Not y'all sit there and we'll go watch a boxing match, get dressed up, having a great time. But then... One man punches somebody or slap. Not even punching a little bitch slap on the stage. You're so traumatized. And using the word traumatized, when then there's actually situations where that should be traumatizing you. Like, that is insulting to me. Yeah. So we just want to say to them, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Either step up no, speak. or shut the fuck up. Yeah, seriously. Either or. If you're not going to speak up for the right things, then shut it up. All right, and with that said, thanks everybody for an amazing <laughs> episode of the comments. Our minimum balance people, thank you so much for pulling up, child. We've been having people DM, how do I find it? So we are now, it's official. You can find us on Google Podcasts, not Spotify, but Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. Um, iHeartMedia. You must got a call. You got a call, sweetie. Sweetie got a call. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you okay. now. <laughs> so tell them where, we, where we they can find us next. We're everywhere. We're, we're, we're Google, we're Spotify, we're um, iHeart, we're Apple, we're everywhere except for um, SoundCloud. But we're all over the podcast yeah. platforms. Also, Industry Friends Season 3 is out today on all streaming platforms. Super excited about this up this season of it. One of the people that I have on there is one of the police officers who was involved in the January sixth Capitol riot. So, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Good. I, well, I'm looking forward to hear that to um listening to that one. And then, guys, you can also catch episodes of me and Dex. We're on uh, Patty and the Millennials. New episode drops tonight. You can find them on all the same platforms every Tuesday night. The best late night podcast on the social streets. Brought off live. <laughs> <laughs>
Even though you guys are late, I was listening last night. Y'all are hilarious, but you know I'm pushing closer to 40. So when that sleep kicks up, I be trying to stay up and be trying to and be engaged, but I be laughing. I just be too tired. To <laughs> so thank you. That's right. Represent the LU University, orange and blue. Uh, Margin, you look awesome. Thank you, baby. Entertain me. How can I get on the comments? Where do I apply? We're going to be taking application soon, sweetie. We'll next week. Yeah, so that's what we'll start doing. I'm glad we got two people on a day, and we'll start integrating that more and more because we really care about what our commenters have to say. We love you guys. Thank you so much for pulling up. And again, our following might be small. Close them out, Dex. But they are engaged. <laughs> With that said, be beautiful. Love you guys. We will actually enjoy your holiday weekend. We will be back next Wednesday. And then probably after that, we'll go on like just a mini one week break just to give us some time. And then we'll be back. Everybody be amazing. Be please, first and foremost, be safe this holiday season. And for the youngins, if you in a house cussing your parents out, do realize that everybody is not Dexter's household. And that could be your last your last hurrah with life. So. And, and parents also know that if you're out there cursing these kids out, they may cave your chest in. So y'all better be careful too. Watch your mouth, parents. <laughs> with that said, bye guys. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the comments, aka Minimum Balance Podcast. Bye.